So when we were younger, my friends and I, we lived in a village and close to this village there was the forest and um, we loved to go and play there like all kids love to do. We would play in the forest, we would build dens in the woods, we would um, swim in the loch, which is like a lake, but in Scotland we call it a loch. And we would sail on uh, rowing boats on the loch as well. It was really amazing fun. We would climb trees and do all kinds of things that kids got up to back in those days and nowadays as well, of course. And that was all the fun that we had. But one of the things that our parents would tell us was, if we go into the woods, you have to be afraid of the bogle. And of course, we knew that they made up the story of the bogle. The bogle wasn't really real, but uh, it would kind of make it exciting for us when we went into the woods to imagine that the bogle was there watching us. <clears throat> None of us had a clue what the bogle looked like or what the bogle would do to us, but sometimes we would be creeping through the woods and uh, somebody would say, what if the bogle comes? And we'd be creeping through really quietly through the woods and then somebody would step on a twig and it would snap. And we would get such a fright because we would think that was the bogle was coming and everyone would run out of the woods screaming and laughing and, and we knew in our, in our hearts that, the, that we were just scaring ourselves actually. And this is a story that my, uh, we used to get told as kids back in Scotland. The story of the bogle. Here it comes. Very long ago in Scotland there was a village and next to this village was a forest like the one I showed you over there behind me and the road ran out of the village and through the forest and on the other side of the forest was a farm and in that farm was the farmer and his wife and their one two three big grown-up boy children they had teenage boys they were like 18 19 17 they were big strong boys and they lived in the farm now in the forest lived the bogle Everybody in the village was afraid of the bogle. Don't go in the forest, they say. The bogle will come. The bogle will get you. Everyone was afraid of the bogle. But the funny thing was, nobody had ever seen the bogle. Nobody had ever had anything done to them by any bogle. But for some reason, everyone was scared of the bogle, right? Even the farmer and his wife, they were scared of the bogle. And his boys. But the wife, she was very interesting because every night when it got dark, she would take a bowl of milk and she would put some bread into that milk bowl and she would take the bowl and she'd put it outside on the doorstep outside of her door as it was getting dark and she'd close the door and she would hear a noise she would hear a noise like and that was the noise of the bogle's bare feet slapping across the stone yard of the of the farm as the bogle came closer and closer to the door and the farmer's wife was behind the door listening and then the farmer's wife would hear and that was the sound of the bogle sniffing away at the bowl and then the farmer's wife would hear this kind of unpleasant noise and that was the sound of the bogle slurping up all the milk and bread and doing a big burp at the end and then as the bogle went away again now do you think the farmer's wife then opened the door and took in the empty bowl no, because the farmer's wife, of course, although she was kind to the bogle, she was also afraid of the bogle. So she didn't open the door. She would wait till the next day. Then she would open the door and the bowl would be there and she would clean it. And uh, so she was kind to that bogle, but scared of it at the same time. What do you think of that? That's a bit weird, right? So one night the bogle came across the stone yard of the farmhouse, flapping across with his flappy feet on the floor. And he came to the door and he went down, he's sniffing around, and guess what? No bowl of milk, no bread, there wasn't anything there for him. The bogle looked to the left, he looked to the right, looked all around, there was nothing. The bogle did something very brave, because he knew people were afraid of him. He went and he looked, and he looked up and he looked in the window of the farmhouse. And this is what he saw. The farmer was... His wife was lying there on the bed and she looked very sick. She did not look very well at all. And the farmer was standing there saying, what shall we do? One of us should get the doctor. One of us should go to the doctor. Because of course it's in the very old days. There were no telephones back then. One of us has to go and get the doctor. And the three big boys, the one, two, three big boys were all standing there. Oh, one of us should go and get the doctor. One of us should go to the doctor. But it was dark. And none of them would go and get the doctor because they were all scared of the 
bogle. You're right, they were all scared of the bogle. We can't go, we're scared of the bogle. And the bogle was looking in the window. He was probably thinking, why are they scared of me? Why, why are they not going? And it was then that the bogle did a very brave thing. The bogle crept along, he opened the door of the farmhouse. And just inside the door of the farmhouse, there was the farmer's coat. And he had a big coat with a hood that came right over the top and, and, and protected him from the rain and the wind and everything. And the bogle lifted that coat down, the big long coat. And the bogle was quite small, probably about the size of an eight or nine year old child. And the bogle flapped across the farmyard and he went into the, the stable where the farmer kept his horse. And when the horse saw the bogle, the horse reared up on its back legs and made a loud neighing sound like, yeah! And the bogle calmed the horse with his magic finger touch and the horse was calm. And the bogle went to the horse, stroking the horse. And surprisingly easily for such a small creature, the bogle jumped up on the back of the horse and rode out through the farmyard and down the path and into the woods. And the bogle rode through the woods and in the woods he was not afraid because he lived in the woods, of course. But when he got out the other side of the woods, and approached the village that's when the bogle started to get afraid because he'd never been in that village before and he knew that the villagers were afraid of him now tomorrow I'll continue the story and I'll tell you the story of what happened when the bogle went into the village and he had to find the doctor's house and he had to try and convince the doctor to come and help the farmer's wife okay so I look forward to telling you the rest of the story tomorrow. I'll see you then.